Good afternoon, all. Welcome to this session, uh, MMPO 006 Materials Management. And uh, today we are going to discuss Unit 2, that is uh, Strategic Role of Materials Management. Uh, let us start with a business switch. I'll tell you a tagline, you have to name the company. The tagline is, the tasty healthy food. And second one, is the world's largest selling biscuit brand. And if your answer is Parle G, you get 10 out of 10. So Parle G is the world's largest selling biscuit brand. <clears throat> its uh, sales turnover is uh, more than 8,000 crore and the market is global. US, Canada, Europe, Dubai, Sri Lanka and all. It began its manufacturing in 1939. In, after independence in 1947, it came with an ad showing its Gluco brand. Parle G, this G stands for Gluco as an Indian alternative. Now, if you see this Parle G, G stands for Genius. And there was a survey and it shows that uh, <coughs> various important points. Uh, the con consumer of uh, Parleji, it uh, spreads across the ages. That means people of all ages, they buy Parleji biscuit. And the pricing is low. And the third one is, it is extensive distribution strategy, mostly in rural. Few days back, uh, I had been to a place, is a rural place in Kalahandi, <coughs> Mukhi Guda. There was a hydropower plant and from Kalahandi means the Bhavani Patna it is around 60 kilometers is a remote place. There also I found uh, Parleji as astonished. And the, if you see the ingredients of Parleji biscuit, mainly wheat flour, palm oil, sugar and other things. But this wheat flour, it constitutes 68 percentage. So Parleji is available everywhere, but how? So some there are some questions to ponder. <laughs> so first is, how does Parleji source its raw materials? Majority is wheat. As uh, we have seen in the last slide, that 60%, 68% of the <coughs> in these ingredients is wheat. And the turnover is 8,000 crores. So it is a huge purchase of raw materials and how <coughs> it manages, how the company manages such bulk purchase and what is the logistics, what is the inward logistics from farmers to manufacturing units and all. Then what are the challenges in managing these inventories of raw materials at the warehouse? So these are the questions. And the answer is the strategic materials management at Parleji. <coughs> so today we are going to discuss the strategic <coughs> things. So any management decisions can be divided into three types. One is strategic, tactical and operational. Strategic is the long term planning. Tactical is the medium term and operational is the short term. Let us take the example of uh, operations management with respect to any company. The strategic decision means uh, the plant location, where you are going to locate your plant, then the plant layout, what will be the layout of the plant, then what will be the capacity, then which technology they use and all. So these are all strategic decisions. Generally, the top level management, they are responsible for these strategic decisions. Then they suppose 
they set up the plant and machineries, they hand it over to the plant manager. Now the plant manager takes the tactical decisions like uh, what should be the inventory, from where you will have these uh, employees and all. <clears throat> and next is operational decisions like lower level management they take that which product to manufacture first, this is priority of the products. So here we, we discuss about the strategic part of materials management. So this is the ad as we are discussing. This is a black and white ad of 1947. This parallel G, G starts for Gluco. And now this ad, this G starts for Genius. <coughs> Introducing this, the availability of materials at the required production facilities is crucial precursor to the timely delivery of customer products. Take, uh, let us take the example of uh, our kitchen. <coughs> Suppose our, our kitchen is not a business unit, but still we can discuss. Say for a typical household, um, the father um, is working and mother is a housewife. So father's office is at 10 o'clock. So he will take uh, his food at uh, around 9 o'clock and he will take also means uh, rice and uh, other curries and uh, at 9 o'clock and he will also take tiffin, chapati and other things, right? So 9 o'clock the food has to be ready. So generally the mother of the house at say 7.30 she will start cooking, right? So the production process starts at 7.30. So before that, all the materials has to be purchased and kept in kitchen. Okay. So if we take this, extend this uh, kitchen to restaurant also, suppose restaurant, <coughs> we have to take the customer, uh, means we'll serve at a certain time. So we need some time and we, prior to that, we, <coughs> we store all the materials. So materials management in an organization is solely responsible for timely availability of materials at the production facilities. So this is the um, role of materials management. And the effective and efficient materials management is aimed, that means the objective of material management is to minimize total material cost so as to contribute to control product cost. Because uh, we have seen the earlier slide also, the material cost in an, uh, in a manufacturing sector is more than 50 percentage. It is 50 to 70 percentage and in some cases it is more than 70 percentage. So if we manage the materials in a smooth way, then it will, the material management cost will reduce. So it will have direct impact on the cost of the product. So cost will reduce, so profit will increase. <coughs> now materials management is the initiator of production process, ensuring availability of the material at right quantity. Right? Again, kitchen, right? Suppose mother has decided that there are five people um, in the family and this is the menu. So prior to that, prior to 7.30, right quantity of items from different items, it has to come. Right quality, right quality and right quality, quantity because the finished products depends upon, you have raw material, you have conversion process and you have finished products. So the quality of the finished products depends upon the process as well as the quality of the raw materials. So we need raw material at right quality, right quantity, at right time because if we delay the time, the production cannot start. And from the right source and at the right place and of course at the right price. 
now let us uh, discuss the scope of material management. It includes all the activities in the flows of materials from raw material suppliers to the customer. We purchase the raw materials from supplier. So suppliers, we purchased the raw material. Then raw material is converted into finished products in manufacturing units. And these finished products goes to the customer. So it includes all the activities from the flow of materials from raw materials suppliers to the consumers. Such activity includes one is physical supply, then production planning control and physical distribution. First is physical supply. Physical supply means we get items from supply vendor. So from vendor, we get item to manufacturing unit. So this is physical supply of raw materials and components. And this is this cost is this uh, transportation cost is also known as inward logistics cost. Next is production planning and control. That means this raw, raw material is converted into finished products by some process by this so production planning and control. And lastly, the finished product goes to the customer. This activity is called phys physical distribution. So this is done by our distribution department. So the role of uh, material management can be understood with the challenges of production. Kotler, <coughs> the famous marketing Professor Kotler defines production as a process of combining various material inputs and immaterial inputs. Immaterial inputs like uh, plants, know-how, information, etc. in order to make something for consumption output. That means the input can be tangible, it can be also intangible. Tangible like raw materials and components intangible like plans, know-how, information, etc. <coughs> Next, the Skinner is the is known as the father of operations management. He was a renowned prof professor at Harvard. He <coughs> pointed out uh, some challenges for uh, production functions. Uh, the first point was making an increasing variety of products on shorter lead times with smaller runs and flawless quality. Because nowadays, people generally, the customer, they want varieties of products. Earlier, uh, the company used to only produce one type of product. Now you see the car also, they have different uh, varieties of car. Uh, earlier, you have only one means. If you see 1970s and 80s, India, they have only ambassador, Hindustan Motor was supplying ambassador, Premier Padmini, this fat, and lately come Marit. But now you see a lot of company with a lot of varieties. Next is we can improve the return on investment by automating and introducing new technology. If uh, you computerize the system, this, if you automize the system, then the human interface will reduce. So your productivity will in increase. <coughs> Next is mechanize, keep schedules flexible, inventories, you make inventories low and capital cost minimal and workforce content. Uh, next, we'll study the objectives of materials management. There are mainly two critical objectives of uh, materials management. The number one is to procure the material at the optimum price with desired quality, variety and dependability of supply. Because the cost of the final product depends on the raw material. So if we get raw material and cheaper place, so it will 
reduce our cost then variety of <coughs> raw materials and dependability of supply we'll study in the next slide next to balance the inventory levels and stocks ensuring the timely availability of materials available because the inventory level is important how much inventory we keep and then goals of uh, materials management is uh, divided into two one is uh, primary goals and next is secondary goals the primary goal obviously as we have discussed right price we have to get the raw material at right price next is higher inventory turnover it is not higher inventory this higher inventory turnover it is not higher inventory this is higher inventory turnover that means the turnover of inventory is high that means here is, that is done by low procurement and storage cost so if you order small amount of raw materials then your inventory turnover will increase Right. That, that means in each order, your quantity, your quantity of order is less. So this procurement is less and storage also, you need less storage. So it will decrease the cost. Next is dependable and continuity of supplies. Quality confirmance because quality of the materials, raw materials is important. Vendor development and vendor relationship will see in just in time concept that vendor and manufacturer they are partner they are acting as partner so vendor relationship is important nowadays we want long term relationship with vendor in systematic information flow information flows in all direction. Next is our secondary goals. Secondary goals is uh, economic forecasting. You have to forecast the things and all. Um, you have to relate, you have to uh, sit with the marketing department and all for forecasting these things. Then product improvement and standardization. Next is make or buy decision. That means you make the product on your own or you buy it from others that is outsource so there are some points whether you make the product or you buy the products we will see in the later slide next is new product development <coughs> so here is the criticality of materials management with respect to manufacturer there are some reasons the very first reason is inventory control. What is inventory? Why inventory is needed? Inventory acts as the shock observer countering delay in supply. We are getting supply from suppliers, the raw materials. There might be some delay in supplies. There might be various regions. Like one is there might be some shortage of raw materials from supplier or there might be some delay in transport facilities delay in logistics activities or uh, it might be there might be some wrong supplies from suppliers so for that to counterbalance this you need inventory right <clears throat> so keeping inventory in buffer is always a safer option for managing but so we we need some buffer but how much buffer we need there are benefits as well as cost to having inventory benefits we have discussed cost is also associated with inventory because inventory means your uh, raw materials 
which is a part of your working capital. So you are storing inventory means you are blocking some working capital. So working capital has direct impact on the cost and profitability. And the problem is to balance the cost of carrying inventory with the following. The first is customer service. See, if you keep your inventory low, then there might be uh, some situations of stock out. You keep your inventory low, so there might be shortage stock out, there might be lost sales, hmm? there might be back, back orders which will adversely affect your company. On the contrary, if you maintain higher inventory, then the customer service will increase. But as we have discussed, the working capital increased. So it has direct impact on cost. So there is a trade-off, how much inventory you keep. Then also transportation cost. <coughs> Because suppose if you order less quantity of material, so your purchase cost is less, your storage cost is less. But ultimately your ordering cost will be, your annual ordering cost will be more. So that might be the reason. Say for example, um, our, in a, our household, our uh, annual demand of sugar is say 60 kg per month we are ordering 5 kg there, there are three situations if you order 1 kg then you need less capacity to store you, your storing cost your carrying cost is less but your ordering cost is more that means you order 60 times in a year in the contrary, if you order 60 kg of sugar at a time, then your ordering cost is less. Your ordering cost is just one order per year. But your carrying cost is more. To carry 60 kg of sugar, you need a huge jar. Then you need a huge room. Your store storage cost increase your uh, insurance uh, means uh, security cost also increase. So always there is a trade-off. In inventory management, it is a trade-off. How much inventory you will keep. <coughs> Next is your just-in-time. JIT stands for just-in-time. So it is developed by Toyota of Japan in 1970s. Toyota's and other companies of Japan, they have started this just-in-time concept. Here the, cha the challenges of production and operations management is trade-off between volume and variety. JIT is the solution of this problem. It restricts inventory and build supplier partnership. So JIT advocates partnership with suppliers. Suppliers and manufacturer, they act as one entity. It is not one entity, it is like a partner. So they act as partner, so they have mutual trust and respect. So they work mutually. So uh, the objective is to reduce the cost and increase the quality. So next is the logistics cost. That means the logistics cost is the transportation cost, <coughs> which includes the transportation of raw materials from supplier to manufacturing unit. There might be various types of transportation modes. So the company along with the supplier, they study the different uh, modes and select the best mode they work together so that the logistics cost will reduce. Next, quality control. In traditional um, firm, we get supplies from suppliers, we inspect them, the qualities and all. So it takes a lot of time and energy also, lot of cost also in, in work. 
but in jit system you trust the supplier right so this inspection quality inspections and all the suppliers will do and they will give you the right quality so this is the regions inventory management just in time logistics cost and quality control now uh, we will see the role of materials managers and organizational activities the first role is decision on making the material or buying this is make or buy that means either you produce the material on your own or you outsource from a third party uh, why we will discuss why these decisions will take suppose uh, we are taking from suppliers and the suppliers is is not adequately uh, means uh, um, giving the materials in the right time so we have problem in the production process then the quality of the uh, supply the raw material from the supplier is not good next the volume requirement of sales is exceeding the possible manufacturing capacity and the materials fails in the cost analysis so if these are the reason then you decide whether you you don't depend on the <coughs> supplier you supply on your own then you make the decisions right this is the decisions making the materials not buying it you make the materials and the interorganizational coordination is production planning and control product design finance and accounts because finance has a say it, uh, it involves cost if you uh, produce the material on your own you need huge uh, cost the next is ma materials forecasting so the materials management needs to forecast the requirements some of the questions that need to consider here are is the material being needed for a long time that means what is the horizon then will there be any requirement after 10 years for the material or are there any changes or technological breakthrough for this materials so you and what are the pricing suppose in future you also forecast that in future is there any price rise for the materials so these are the <coughs> role of material managers with respect to materials forecasting and the um, organizational means uh, inter organizational coordination functions are marketing production planning and control supplier development the next role of materials manager is materials planning and budgeting uh, the material planning means suppose <coughs> say now it is a picnic season holiday season suppose a resort resort is having seven places for uh, events and all suppose out of seven there are five events so tomorrow there are five events hmm? means five uh, parties will come and stay so they have already given that what are the people they are going to stay and what are the items in the menu so suppose out of seven there are seven parties so they have different menus and all so this the marketing department or the reception they inform it to the purchase section so the purchase section segregates the items and they give suppose for vegetables to one vendor <coughs> for um, non veg items for kirana stores etc etc so that is what material planning is done so here the involves functional areas like production planning and control logistics and supplier development logistics also plays an important role because supplier it comes to manufacturer by logistics in our logistics 
Next is the selection of potential information sources. So this will include selection of suppliers and market research information such as price trends, corporate environment, etc. So the material management data may help this because information plays an important role. So the last one, the fifth one is purchasing. Purchasing commits a lot of capital, commits a lot of capital in an organization. So materials management information allows very creative purchasing by organization as it sees most of the trades. It also helps while purchasing in uncertain situation. We have discussed that is that we purchase materials from different sources, right? We pay the cost, so that is purchasing cost. And in there is regular situation, purchasing is different. And there is suppose some uncertain situation, there is some crisis, so you have to go beyond the law. So there is also purchasing is important. So inter-organizational coordination is supplier development, finance and accounts, logistics management. The sixth one is uh, forecasting of price. This is uh, one of the most essential functions because you have to forecast the price previously. Right? So the supplier um, along with the finance department and all, so they do this research for forecasting the price. The last one is uh, stores management and inventory control. As we have seen that materials from supplier, it comes to manufacturer via stores. Hmm? They keep inventory. So it helps the store functional areas such as control of material. So we receive the materials and we check, we inspect if there are some problem, then we inform and the supplier as well as our team also. So here the inter-organizational inter coordinations are supplier development, finance and accounts, <coughs> warehouse, security personnel. Now coming to supply chain concept. Uh, let us uh, discuss what is supply chain. Suppose for example, we are taking tea, chai, I'm looking at So what is the supply chain of tea? We take tea from say chai dokan, roadside chai dokan. So that chai dokan, tea stall, he purchased tea dust, chai ka patti from retailer Chai Dukan tea stall purchased tea dust from retailer. Retailer purchased it from wholesaler. Wholesaler purchased it from distributor. Distributor purchased it from C and F. In tea distribution unit, you have C and F. C and F stands for clearing and forwarding agent. So this C and F takes the items from manufacturer. That means the from Chai Bagan, right? Suppose Tata tea, Tata tea manufacturer manufactures tea, it gives to sold sells to C and F agent, C and F agent to distributor. Suppose distributor for a particular state, Tata tea, C and F agent, distributor, wholesaler, retailer, and consumer. So this is the chain. So this is known as the supply chain. Now what is <coughs> supply chain concept? So here we have suppliers as we have seen, seen. Suppose this is the tea company, Tata Tea. This is the manufacturing company. It gets supplies from suppliers. Suppose a tea company what is the, the supplies? Supplies means uh, uh, it requires uh, um, 
for growing these trees and all it requires uh, your pesticides it requires fertilizers and all and it requires machines so suppliers they supply these machines fertilizers and pesticides to the tea company right so the tea company suppose you have purchase section you have production section you have distribution section so from distribution sec section it goes the final product goes to customer via some media right say for example this company one company any any company it has divided into three sections one is purchasing one is production one is distribution what is the objective of purchase now we have three separate entities purchasing is one production is one distribution is one so what is the work of purchase department it gets from supplier the raw materials and all it gets from supplier and what is the objective of purchase department that means it holds purchase adequate amount of materials raw materials and all so that there will be smooth function in production next it will try to reduce the purchasing cost by purchasing bulk product if you purchase bulk product you get quantity discount so this is the objective of purchasing section then we produce the material then distribution what is the work of distribution it distributes the final product from company to the customer right so what is the objective of distribution so it will always try to reduce the distribution cost so it will aim at your full truck load capacity so if you send full truck load your distribution cost will reduce but it may have adverse impact on the customer service because suppose customers once in 3 days you don't have full truck load you send the materials up to 3 days so there might be some customers dissatisfaction so our total organization's objective is reducing the cost and the objective is reducing the cost but we have seen there are conflicting objects in purchasing and distribution so here we correlate we correlate purchasing production and distribution so this is known as internal supply chain prior to that purchasing section is different production is different distribution is different now we integrate this we integrate purchasing with production and distribution so this is known as internal supply chain so internal supply chain is also known as materials management we integrate purchasing production and distribution now now we have integrated these three purchasing production distribution internal supply chain so supply suppliers are different and customers are different so in external supply chain or supply chain concept we also include suppliers as well as customers so here we we get information from suppliers and we get information from customers also right so next is our in supply chain concept we integrate suppliers with company with customers so this is the concept of supply chain and the supply chain the <coughs> objective of supply chain management is to reduce the overall cost it is not that reduce the cost of purchasing department or cost of production or cost of distribution department that means as a whole taking supply chain as a unit we want to reduce the cost overall cost and increasing the customer service
And so the basic role of supply chain is to integrate customer's demand and supply. In fact, supply chain um, starts with suppliers, supplier, and end with, ends with customers, customer. So supply chain includes coordination among all the fun functions fulfilling customer's demand, such as marketing, research and development, operations, distribution, logistics, finance, and accounting. So the scope of supply chain encompasses to the entire business functions rather than just to manufacturing or operations. The wider and enlarged view dimensions of supply chain decisions are strategic decisions, tactical decisions and operational decisions. So strategic is long term decisions, maybe more than a year, might be 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. So this is strategic decisions and tactical decisions is uh, mostly one year and all and operational decisions less than a month or something. So the top management people, they take strategic decisions, middle management people, they take tactical decisions, lower management people, they take operational decisions. Next is the supply chain flows and materials management. It focuses on three basic flows of materials in the organizations. First is raw materials. So suppose we have suppliers, manufacturing unit, customers. So we get raw materials from suppliers. So this is known as physical distribution system. From supplier to manufacturing need. This is physical distribution. So all the raw materials and component it comes. Next is the production process inside the organizations. So the raw material gets converted into finished products, products by some processes. So these are all WIP or working progress or working process. It flows within the production function. This is inside the organizations. Last, now we get the finished products. Now we supply the finished products to the customer. So the finished goods flows through physical distribution system to the end user. So this is physical distribution system. So first is raw materials from suppliers through physical distribution, WIP within the organization. Last is finished goods to suppliers. Mm, this is the flow of materials and information in supply chain. We have discussed what is supply chain. So this is suppliers, manufacturer, distribution system, customers. Suppliers, they supply the raw materials to manufacturer. Here, this is the arrow. So you have work in process. That there are some process which converts raw materials into the finished goods. And the manufacturer, through distribution systems, it the finished good goes to the customer through this distribution system, distribution department. So here raw materials come from suppliers to manufacturer. Here you have working process, then Finished goods goes here, finished goods goes to customers. So this is the flow. So this is the material flow of product or services. But what about information flow? Information flows in all direction. Information flows, information flows from server. Generally fast the information, the feedback we get from customer. So we get the data from customer, we forecast the demand, it, then we give it to the manufacturing section, the, then manufacturing this distribution uh, system, it goes to manufacturer, manufacturer, the information goes to supplier. And so this information flows in both direction, from suppliers to customers and from customers to suppliers also. But 
the materials generally flow generally the material flow in this direction there are some cases where the materials flow in opposite direction also i am giving you an example um, suppose uh, we, we are um, drinking uh, soft drinks the pepsi or uh, thumbs up or coca cola in rgb retainable glass bottle so we purchase we drink in the retailer then we return the bottle to the um, retailer so what the retailer does the retailer return the bottle to the wholesaler the wholesaler return the bottle to the distributor the distributor return the bottle to the manufacturer the pepsi company or instant beverages limited so this is backward logistics this is called reverse logistics so here this is forward logistics this is reverse logistics suppose we are uh, we have a automatic uh, automobile battery or uh, inverter battery for uh, our home so after the battery service is over we give it back to the retailer and the retailer is paying money right so that in turn it returns to the manufacturer so this is reverse logistics so this is the flow of materials and information in supply chain so here is the uh, pyramid of uh, supply chain management we have seen what is supply chain supply chain is all the entities the suppliers manufacturer um, distribution entities and customers along with the logistics along with customers also this is the supply chain and <clears throat> why we will manage supply chain this is supply scm is supply chain management so supply chain management is the handling of the entire production flow of a good or service as we have discussed in the previous examples the supply chain of chai it started from tata tea to c and f agent distributor wholesaler retailer customer so th this is the flow so starting from the raw materials all the way to delivering the final product to the customer so this is the supply chain management and what is the objective of supply chain management the objective of supply chain management is to reduce the overall cost it is not just to reduce cost of only one entity it is to reduce the overall cost and with customer satisfaction so here uh, we have uh, this is the pyramid of uh, supply chain management <clears throat> the core functional areas are production planning materials management inventory control stores logistics marketing hr finance accounting and it systems right so supply chain management is a broader concept comparing to materials management supply chain management is a broader concept so with uh, each organizations orienting functional areas towards supply chain objectives so what is the objective of supply chain management one is reducing the overall cost it is not reducing the only cost of one entity it is reducing the overall cost overall system wide cost then how it is possible it is possible by coordinating between partner organizations here here we are taking supplier as a partner right so alignment between partner organizations you make partnership with suppliers so here bringing the partner organizations to be to work together because you tell your information to your supplier and supplier will tell also his information to your manufacturer manufacturer so it is better if uh, you you know that this is in this month suppose for next year in this months january to december you need approximately this this supplies quantity so prior to that you give it to the supplier so it will be easy for the supplier right 
<coughs> next is competitiveness and efficiency and the last one is the customer service so this is the apex of the pyramid that means the supply chain management objective is to customer satisfaction then uh, significance of material management the deployment of specialized materials management function it advisable if higher total material cost because the material out of the 5 m the most significant m with respect to cost is materials apart from money these materials constitutes 50 to 70 percent is of the material cost 50 to 70 percent of the cost constitutes material and sometimes it is more so <clears throat> higher the total material cost higher inventory storage and handling cost if your inventory storage is high that means your cost is more your working capital is ball is blocked higher inventory turns sometimes if you are higher inventory turns then your total ordering cost will be more so it has an impact multi location multiple vendors and suppliers so you have multiple vendors also you have problem because you cannot partner with multiple vendor you can partner with one vendor so higher imports and lengthier procurement lead times lead time is the time taken between placing an order and receiving the material so higher customer induced variations in demand because customer they demand now they demand varieties of product so this is an example uh, which will show the profit and loss of a company so let us consider this is a abc company <coughs> so here is the profit and loss statement of a manufacturing company so it includes following components as shown in the table so here uh, the sales or revenue is 1 lakh rupees sales is 1 lakh right so direct material cost is 50000 that is our materials cost purchasing cost revenue sales is 1 lakh direct material cost is 50000 direct our labor cost is 20000 and overhead cost is 20000 so what is the total cost tc is equal to a plus b plus c direct materials plus direct labor plus direct overheads so this tc is 50000 plus 20000 plus 20000 it is 90000 so 90000 is the total cost and total revenue is 1 lakh so our gross profit is this sales minus this total cost so it is 10000 so percentage is 10 percentage next we will see we will reduce this direct material with we will partner partner with the supplier so we work together we work together to reduce the this direct material cost might be some transportation cost etc etc right and direct labor cost also we'll see in the next slide so here revenue is same 1 lakh rupees and direct material cost previously it was 50000 now we have reduced to 40000 right and direct labor cost it was 20000 it was 20000 now we have reduced to 15000 overhead remains constant we cannot change the overhead so now the total cost of the goods a b c 40000 plus 15000 plus 20000 so it comes 
so our gross profit is revenue minus cost so this is 1 lakh minus 75000 is 25000 so percentage is 25 percentage earlier it was 10 percentage is it clear now that if we reduce the material cost how it has impact on the profit and loss account and next is the materials management and operational excellence one of the important purpose of materials management function is to ensure continuous and uninterrupted supplies of material because we produce finished goods in the production side so for production we need continuously quality and quantity material so materials management ensures this function next is materials management develops the tactics such as economic order quantity what is economic order quantity economic order quantity that means the order quantity we place the order quantity in such a way that it is economical that means suppose in inventory generally we consider two costs apart from purchasing cost purchasing cost is same purchasing cost is the cost of material we purchase in a year in a year purchasing cost is same we have another two cost one is your ordering cost one is your carrying cost if your ordering cost increases suppose the same examples we consume 60 kg of sugar in a year if we order 60 units 60 orders that means in each order we give 1 kg of sugar then our carrying cost will decrease for keeping 1 kg we need a small jar carrying cost will decrease inventory tons will increase but ultimately the ordering cost will increase because we have to place 60 orders on the contrary if we give one order and that is 60 kg per year then the ordering cost will decrease just one ordering cost but the carrying cost will increase you need a huge jar to keep and all so that is your EOQ the concept of inventory management we have two aspects one is how much to order one is when to order how much to order is your EOQ and when to order is when your inventory level reaches this you place an order suppose you keep 5 kg of sugar if your inventory level reaches 1.5 kg you place an order you place an order for how much you place an order for this EOQ and about safety stocks, inventory management, etc. So this uh, helps the organizations to produce and deliver its goods on times as per the schedule and customer demands pursuing operational excellence in terms of quality and delivery of supplies along with the product cost. Then the critical challenges in materials management we have uh, several challenges one is materials planning this is the most important thing then a product and design specification next is uh, issues relating to obsolescence next is issue relating to procurement the role of uh, material management is to locate and select the right suppliers suppliers is important and we have seen <coughs> because JIT uh, in JIT concept we need to have partnership with suppliers we communicate with the suppliers we negotiate with the suppliers and we do contract suppliers and control and monitor suppliers performance and this is the buyer uh, supplier relationship one is traditional organizations another is supply chain driven organizations 
the pur purchase criteria in traditional traditional organizations is lowest price but in supply chain driven organizations quality is not the only aspects you have to see the um, competency of the firm the reputation of the firm so duration traditional organizations is short terms here it is long terms number of suppliers several for each time here is mostly one hmm. type of agreement is contractual but here type of agreement with long term relationships so this is integrated uh, uh, materials management uh, so here the integrated uh, materials management is to management of materials in an integrative manner to make sustainable economic growth through efficient utilization of management integrative system this is your mis and advanced technologies and economic raw materials for manufacture so this is the uh, managing flow of uh, materials and information the material flows in dotted line as we have seen we get supplies from vendor or supplier to stores by receiving and inspection to store then it goes to production department then production department the final product is finished product it goes to customer via this logistics department so material flows from vendor from supplier to receiving section to stores then production section then customer and all other things your information flows right purchasing section you have information uh, interaction with vendor suppliers receiving section stores with production planning control and inventory control sales and marketing with production planning and consumer or customer inventory control with stores and production and manufacturing so this is the managing flow of information thank you thank you for attending